You can sing all you want to You can sing all you want to And still get it wrong Oh, worship is more than a song You can sing if you want to you can sing all you want to You can sing all you want to And still get my novel It is a book for you Oh, a book for you Oh, oh, oh. Hey everyone this is Winston Mayo, the regular Christian guy, and this show is brought to you by my novel, Searching for the Land. And if you get it, that's something you won't get wrong. Because you can scroll all you want to. You can binge on YouTube all you want to. You can hit the like button if you want to. And still get my book. Because you will not be wrong. Let's get to the show. Hello, thank you for tuning in to the Blessed Report with Winston Mayo, the regular Christian guy. And today we have a very dope, cool, awesome topic that is really edifying to the body of Christ and the church. And it is, what is praise and worship? And this is a really cool topic because it's not that um, convicting or controversial. And it really um, builds you up in your faith and your walk. Um, and I think it's an often neglected staple of church that we don't often explain. So praise and worship is as crucial to the Christian walk and experience as like prayer, Bible study, fasting, evangelism, service, community, um, coming together, fellowship, discipling, and it is especially lacking in males, so I think this video can rectify any um, misconceptions when it comes to praise and worship, praise versus worship. What is it to be a praiser? What is it to be a worshiper? And um, what does that really look like? So to start off, what is the difference between um, praise and worship. I heard a good friend of mine explaining that praise is acknowledgement of God, an invitation of his presence, and a rejoicing at his character and his name, and um, just him. So this is why um, the scripture says that God will inhabit the praises of his people. God will dwell, God will be amongst us as we begin to praise him. But I don't want um, praise to be thought of as strictly singing and I don't want worship to be um, strictly thought of as singing neither, <laughs> neither, neither. <laughs> but um, just praising God, blessing his name because he is worthy and um, worthy to be praised. So. Um, that scripture, pretty sure it's Psalms 22, 3. Um, God will inhabit the praises of Israel. And that is different than worship for um, same understanding of worship. Worship is acknowledgement that he is here. So being in awe and such reverence at his presence that you begin to worship him and reverence him and bow down and honor him and glorify his presence because it's so overtaking. And so that's oftentimes why when you hear, now I'm talking about music and songs, 
praise songs that are often uplifting, uh, rejoicing, more fast paced, um, just to, I call it tilling the soil or softening the ground because oftentimes we can come to church or um, into a space where we aren't open to receiving the presence of God or what he has for us. So praise begins to break down the walls, break down your heart and heart um, that Hebrews 13 um, talks about. The deceitfulness of sin has hardened your heart. So uh, praise opens you up. So that's why it says um, the power of life and death is in the tongue. So as you begin to praise God, he begins to enter in to you into your praises so that's why it's important for you personally to praise and worship in your intimate time with God and also corporately um, to prepare your hearts for wherever move of God but then you find that worship is oftentimes um, slower softer and um, more intimate and that's because you don't need so many distractions when you are face to face with God. So his presence is there. And um, if that was the case of like praise, like he's already there, all that like praise of beast, that rejoicing will kind of be in the way. But in the Bible, you see like moves of the spirit of God where the anointing, the presence of God, the presence of the spirit of God was so thick, they were unable to move and collapse and they just fell to their knees and stuff like that. But um, that's just speaking about strictly music, strictly songs. So um, I'm just opening it up with like the importance of music, the importance of songs and singing. It says to um, sing a new song unto the Lord and um, sing psalms um, and hymns. Um, does it say hymns in the Bible? I don't know. Um, but it says, it does say like godly songs. <laughs> so we can create songs and songs are important with um, basically tilling the soil of our hearts in preparation and as we're clean, um, cleansing ourselves in prayer and in praise and we're empty, that's um, a good point. Uh, praise and, um, empties you for the presence of God. So once you invite the spirit in and he is there, um, the good light can mix with the darkness in us. So that has to be expelled, we have to repent. And that's a good um, time to do all of that um, in the worship when you move from praise because it's just such a reflection of his purity, his holiness, his power, his authority, his character, his love, and being such awe and reverence of that, you just begin to worship. And that's just what like um, the fear of God is. The fear of God is not like an afraid fear. It's to be in such awe and such reverence of his majesty, of his glory, of his power that is quite stunning, shocking, and kind of unbearable in a amazing way, and an amazing and like really empowering way. I think it's important when it comes to um, scriptures, what does it say about worship versus what we have imputed into the worship in our culture and in our churches. So in John 4, 23, it says that God searches out worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. So we have to realign our thinking that worship is strictly reserved for singing because all of us cannot sing. So that scripture does not read, God searches out singers who will sing to him in spirit and in truth, but um, worshipers. So oftentimes we reserve worship as a time of singing and music and instruments. But if biblically worship is a posture of the heart, that our heart is positioned in such adoration, such reverence, such love, 
such um, obedience towards God, that scripture becomes more living and more applicable to our lives, that God searches out those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. So worship is not what you sing, it's who you are. And um, as Christians, we're all called to be worshipers, not to be uh, worship leaders on the stage, a microphone, and the light shine down on us, but we are worshipers nonetheless because we are Christians. Songs are supposed to facilitate the ushering in of the Spirit, but since we are vessels for the Holy Spirit, everywhere we go, we should be altars for the Holy Spirit to move and have his being and stuff. So, uh, 1 Corinthians says, um, chapter 10 says that we do everything for the glory of God. That is what makes us a worshiper. And um, Romans 14, yeah. Everything that we do, we have to do in faith, otherwise it is sin. So, how you manage your money, that is worship. That is what makes you a worshiper. How you love your parents, how you love your children, that is worship unto God. How you serve at your job um, that you don't like, how you bear the fruits of the Spirit, that is worship. Worship begins when the music ends, how you live your life. And that is what um, Matthew 15, 8 talks about when it says they honor me with their mouths, but their heart is far from me. So that is Matthew 15, 8. And so I think it's ironic that oftentimes we reserve worship as in what we say and what we sing. And this verse, Matthew 15, 8, says the same thing, that you honor me with your mouth, with your lips, but your heart is far from me. So worship is a position and a posture of the heart and what you do is unto service and glory of God alone because he is deserving. So just remember um, that scripture says God is searching out people that will worship him in spirit and in truth not song and in truth. And that's why Elsa says, I will worship the Lord all my soul and all that's within me. So not all that's within my lungs, not all that's within my voice, but it says love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. That is worship. That is reverence. So anything outside of the church setting actually might be considered more of worship than anything that you have seen. So that's cool too. And I think um, another error where we um, misunderstood praise and worship that we are mixing the presence of God for emotion and feeling and especially emotionalism and worship isn't crying. Yes, you can be in such awe and reverence and love for God that you do begin crying, um, but being overcome in emotion doesn't mean that you're overcome by his presence or with intimacy. And we have to get out of the habit of being um, feelings led because we're led by our flesh. Like oftentimes, um, you can be moved by music and not be moved by the Spirit of God. And this is evident, really evident in movies, because this form of art and entertainment could have nothing to do with God or the Holy Spirit or Jesus. But it can make you cry, it can make you laugh, it can make you scared, it can make you excited. Look at each genre, listen to the music score in the background, or watch a movie that has no music and just acting, you will find that the emotional roller coaster basically that you're on is hindered or your emotional attachment and investment is not as potent 
And I think this is um, a crutch that we often use, that we rely on emotion, we rely on music to make us feel the presence of God, but the presence of God should make us feel the presence of God. <laughs> And um, if we are ever relying on some type of supplement, basically, of, oh, I need this song to get me where I need to go in God, I don't want you to be misguided. It says to test every spirit. And um, you have a, um, a counterfeit spirit, not that the music is counterfeit, but wherever you're experiencing or whatever you're doing, your feelings are led by flesh. So just um, tune it back in intimacy. Maybe your worship doesn't need music. Maybe your worship doesn't need such stimulation where a hyper stimulized um, society. So we really need like big stuff, um, but maybe um, switch up how you do things and make sure that what you're experiencing is an encounter with God and not emotion. So when you're trying to um, understand if what you're experiencing is real in a pure relationship of praise and worship, um, I have a few questions. Um, look at your playlist and your music and see if the lyrics are rooted somewhere in the word of God because where the power comes from is the Spirit of God and the Spirit of God is his word so otherwise they're just man's words they're just fleshly emotions um, also listen to the songs and see if it makes you focus your sight on your Savior on the singer or on yourself because this is kind of true we um, build up idols and we want to claim God's names to them. So we can be like, that song is so great, but what's overtaking you is talent and not anointing. And um, you can have like just a really good singer. Like I'm waiting for the day Adele comes over the gospel. Like she will kill it. <laughs> but, um, the gifts of God are without repentance. She's anointed, but is she using the anointing uh, to the fullness and glory of God? Eh, maybe not. <laughs> but um, I could be really endowed and overtaken by her talent. It doesn't mean I'm being overtaken by the Spirit of God. Um, and that's evident in her lyrics. And also, um, try the Spirit when it comes to gospel songs. Um, does it make me think about God himself or make me think about how good this person can sing or how the Lord is about to bless me and his blessings because that is also idolatry. I'm thinking about things and I should be thinking about him only. And um, last question, reflect at the end how you feel when it comes to the music. And if that song left you thinking, man, that was a really good song, or man, he's a really good God. Because from the abundance of a man or of his heart, I mean, the mouth speaks. So whatever comes to mind, whatever moves you is really what's in you and what is feeding your spirit, what is feeding your gates, your eye gate, your ear gate, and your heart. So the music is feeding something and what it's rooted in should be Christ and should make you be in such reverence, such worship, that is worship, um, that you should be in awe and just love for him alone, that he's enough, that he satisfies. But if the music really just indelves you and stirs you up in the music and that's where you're left, you're going to think that music is reserved worship. You're going, it's going to make you think that worship is reserved to a song. Worship is reserved to a building. Worship is reserved to a group. So um, really reflect on um, the posture of your heart. 
it says in Psalms that we need to incline our heart um, to the Lord. So that means our heart can be in a position that is not able to properly worship. And what we have to do, pray, fast, declare things and edify your heart up unto the Lord. And that's how you become prostrate. And um, that is the beauty of having um, worship leaders. Worship leaders are literally supposed to lead us into worship. But once we are led, we do the rest. Um, the Holy Spirit leads us, um, but we have a responsibility to be able to obtain this for ourselves. So what you experience in a communal church setting, you should be able to experience that type of in intimacy, that type of power, that type of clarity, that type of wisdom, that type of revelation by yourself. Um, in your prayer in Bible study and not rely on people to usher in the spirit of God, but it's your relationship with God should be able to usher in his spirit because he dwells in us and around us and he moves, lives, moves, has his being in us. And um, last points, um, I don't want anyone to think that worship um, is reserved to singing. And oftentimes, a lot of people worship through mo movement and don't recognize that um, that is a physical prayer worship when it comes to like dance. And I never want um, someone to discount this form of worship as non-authentic or fake or dramatic. Like, yeah, we got some dramatic people, but if you don't know someone's testimony, their expression of worship could be running around. All that other stuff, I don't know. Have the Holy Spirit to give you discernment to see if it's authentic, but there are certain things that we don't recognize. Um, you could be praying in the prophetic through your physical movements and Things are happening in the spiritual realm, in the heavenlies, that you are expressing in your natural self. Um, through dance, through song, um, through a lot of things that um, take uh, manifestation. That's what I'm looking for. It manifests like the fire of the Holy Spirit. So uh, feel free when you feel such a mood, when you hear a song that is different than the one they're singing on stage, like move on that. When you want to raise your hands, we oftentimes don't explain that raising your hands is a physical expression of a spiritual move of God. So I raise my hands, my hands are open. I am open to receiving from God. Um, you can't receive with a clenched fist. Oftentimes you come to church, you're closed off. These are closed off movements. But as I begin to open up, I open up for the spirit of, the spirit of God to move and dwell in me. So when people um, begin to kneel to God, I am recognizing his authority. I'm recognizing my humility and the sin in me that I am not worthy of the presence of God, but still he is there. So I need to reverence him and be in proper position. So I'm gonna just say like last night, my first experience from the Holy Spirit was in worship um, when I was being led by the worship leaders because everybody was experiencing something from the Holy Spirit. And I wasn't feeling nothing. And we often have to go and mature and understand that worship isn't a feeling, faith isn't a feeling, the Holy Spirit isn't a feeling, but that's what I wanted. So I was like, what is different than everyone else than me? They were saying, I was like, I'm trying to encounter God. I began to sing. 
And as I began to sing, he began to inhabit my praises, began to till the land. And then I continued to look. People were raising their hands. I was closed up. So I began to raise my hands. And as I began to acknowledge where my help comes from, my hands are open to heaven for the, our Father which is in heaven is here and I am inclining my heart, I'm inclining my hands upward to acknowledge him and be open to receive. I bent my knee um, in humility. Um, a prideful heart says like, oh, I'm, it doesn't take all that. What if it does? Like honestly and truly, <laughs> honestly, if it doesn't take all that, you have already had what you're trying to experience. I did, so I humbled myself, got on my knees, and Holy Spirit, like a dove, like <laughs> in the Bible, came down like a light, and bah, not like hit me, I didn't fall out or nothing, but um, I encountered God, and it was like a fire, and it never went out the rest of my life, and that was my first experience with the Holy Spirit, and I gave my life the year before, so I went a whole year without truly experiencing like the full power of God and the Holy Spirit. So I think that's one thing that a lot of Christians are going through is that we are okay with a surface level relationship with God, that we are actually at the gates of wherever he has for us. So there's just such a satisfaction in just having glimpses of God that we are unaware that we are still outside the gates and that in worship God is inviting us to enter in into his inner courts into his secret place for there's certain things that are only revealed, only promised to those who are close in intimacy with God. And I think that's why it says that God searches out worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth, because if it was easy and many were going to find it, God wouldn't seek it out, but it's rare. So if we cross reference that with a verse about salvation that the path of destruction is wide and broad and many find it, but the way to salvation is straight to and narrow and a lot of people don't find it. And I mean like a few find it, then how much more is this intimacy being missed because we're not finding that space of worship. We're not finding that intimacy and that closeness because we are just so overtaken by glimpses and being outside his gate, not knowing it because God is so powerful. He is so amazing. He is so glorious that even his glimpses are overtaken, but God is trying to invite us in into the depths, like it says in uh, Romans 8, what's the height, what's the breadth, what's the length, what is the depth of his love? So we need to move away from this surface level infatuation with God, but have a deep love for him. And that's worship. So um, thank you for watching the Blessed Report with the Mail, the regular Christian guy. I want y'all to remember that worship is crucial to your walk as much as fasting, Bible study, and prayer. So if you open yourself up, you do not have to be an amazing singer, but in your intimacy, have a a lot of time for singing, for praise, rejoicing in the goodness of God and in his heart, but also in worship, for reflecting on his presence and dwelling in his secret place, in the inner courts, in the upper room um, that's only reserved for his worshipers that will worship him in spirit and truth, not just in song, 
but in action and love and forgiveness and reflect his goodness everywhere you go, you'll find that your worship experience will be more full. You'll find that your walk with God will be more rich and you'll just find that everything will begin just to overflow when it comes to your intimacy and relationship. And that's one thing, um, worship, you can't fake that. I'm not talking about all emotionalism, crying, uh, running around, all that other stuff. Worship is really intimate, it's really genuine, it's sensitive, it's close. And that's why I think oftentimes a lot of males um, don't open themselves up to that and think that worship is sensitive and feminine, but just because um, it has feelings and emotion doesn't mean that it's feminine, it just means it's genuine, it's honest and truthful. So there's an aspect in men, uh, sometimes even women, that we don't allow ourselves to be that open, to be that exposed, to be that vulnerable, but worship in our intimate time with the Lord allows us to be open and as we're open with God, he can make us open enough with others and uh, most of all, open with ourselves with uh, where we need to be. And um, this just enhances, enriches, develops relationship with him, others, and um, begins to um, set free and cleanse and just, um, provide liberty. So be free in your worship. Um, if you can't be free publicly um, because you're still shy, at least be free by yourself. So if you need some music, um, go check out my playlist. I have a uh, two worship playlist, one called true worship and one called intimate worship. I recommend intimate worship. I think a lot of y'all have um, a lot of worship music, but um, Intimate worship is really about that closeness with God. Um, not a lot of show, not a lot of words, not a lot of lyrics, not a lot of um, highness when it comes to stimulation, but that stillness, abiding in his presence and being still, and you know that he is God, that type of development in your relationship is like none of it. So thank you for watching the show <laughs> and um, support a brother um, by clicking the like and subscribe button if it's been a blessing remember this could be your evangelism your witnessing your ministry so share this to um, someone and be a blessing to their life um, everything that important is in the description box below all the bible verses all my social media twitter instagram facebook youtube tumblr all that other cool stuff and my new book <laughs> and um, all the music that I am playing in my videos and on my playlist, go check that out. Explore the YouTube page. I have a lot of cool stuff on here. And um, today's sponsor is Faithfully There clothing brand, Christian clothing brand, gave me this dope t-shirt. Don't obey people's expectations. <laughs> and it's from my man KP. And I love that man. He's a blessing to my life. So um, all his information is in the description box below. So support him. Um, support good uh, worship artists by buying their songs and their music. So, uh, support good Christian clothing brands that are dope, like cool to wear and fashionable by um, supporting their brands and um, funding them and blessing their ministry in their lives. And um, subscribe to each other. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I say a lot of things. But I think that's it. Thank you for watching. Um, comment below. Um, I like hearing from y'all. And yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> and remember that God blesses people by using people to bless people. How have you been a blessing today? Thanks for watching. Anything I put before my God is an idol. Anything I want with all my heart is an idol And anything I can I will worship you like you want me to I will praise you right 
I will pray all night. I will worship you like you want me to. Cause my flesh tell me no. But my spirit, my spirit say yeah. I don't want to hurt nobody. Is that this is the devil? I want him to die. Die in the pits of hell. Oh, shut up. No, no.